Welcome to the MOOC's course Organic Chemical Technology. The title of today's lecture is Paper and Pulp Industry. In this chapter particularly we will be discussing about the production of pulp by different methods, the comparison between different methods that are available for the production of the pulp, followed by the production of paper from the pulp and then uh, recovery of chemicals from the uh, liquor that has been producing the pulp. Right? So, that is what we are going to discuss and then we are also going to see the major engineering problems associated with uh, both uh, pulp production as well as the paper making. In addition, we are going to discuss about the cellulose and its derivatives as well because cellulose is nothing but or maybe other way pulp is nothing but commercial cellulose. So, that is the reason cellulose and its derivatives part should also come into the chapter of uh, pulp and paper industry. So, that is what we are going to discuss in this particular chapter. However, before going to the details of uh, uh, such technological details of uh, pulp and paper production and then uh, chemical recovery etc. those parts, we will be having a brief introduction about the uh, pulp and paper industries. Indian paper industry is more than 100 years old and is the first one in the world to use bamboo as raw material because uh, different types of foods are in general used as a raw material for the production of the pulp followed by the paper. So, those things anyway we are going to discuss, but bamboo was not used earlier by the other industries other uh, uh, especially other countries. Indian paper industry is the first one to use bamboo as raw material. What is so great about the bamboo as raw material? Because it is the only one that gives long and strong fibers to get the you know cellulose, if the fibers and then uh, corresponding cellulose that you get uh, during the pulping process, if it is long and then strong enough, if it is more in cellulose content and uh, negligible uh, lignin contents, then obviously the quality of the paper is going to be the better one. That is the good thing about this bamboo raw material. But however, uh, the demand for the paper is so much high that having so many bamboo plants is not possible. Cultivation of the bamboo has not been taken to that level. So, because of that one, its production cannot be greatly expanded to meet increased production requirements. However, you know other raw materials identified and extensively used nowadays due to limited uh, forest uh, resources. They include bagasse from the sugar industry, straws, rice straw, wheat straw, etc., jutes, etc., uh, in addition to waste paper also. Waste paper that means like you know the paper that has been utilized for different purposes, academic, non-academic, commercial purpose, etc. Then after the use then what happens you know that paper if it is not at all useful in future then that you that paper you can regard as, as waste paper including the newspapers, etc. also you can regard as a uh, waste paper, right. Such paper can also be utilized as a raw material, right and then uh, that can be repulp and then the chemicals. Uh, pigments such as like you know color pigments because when you use the paper you whether you are writing or printing you may be using different colors. So, those color pigments has to be removed before it is repulping. So, once those color pigments are removed then uh, such waste paper can also be you know utilized as a raw material for pulping and then making other papers. But however, uh, availability of such uh, waste papers are uh, uh, in less quantity. So, then because of that reason you know what we have, we can have such kind of paper industries only in the small units or small scales only, right. So, now obviously we understand that the bamboo is the better raw material because of uh, the length and then strength of the cellulose that you are going to get, but uh, availability of bamboo is not that much. So, then what you can do? You can uh, develop such kind of uh, uh, you know raw materials like bagasse, straw, etc. and then you blend you blend along with the bamboo and then try to produce a better quality paper, okay? that is also possible. Such materials must be developed and good quality paper pulp can be made by blending with bamboo fibers. right? Now, we discuss about the grouping of Indian paper industry. Actually, paper industry can be grouped uh, by different ways like you know one is by the method of the production, other one is uh, you know uh, you know by end use, other one is by the sources, resources like you know raw material etc. Like this you know different ways it is possible to group even the size of size of the plant, right. So, all those matters may be 
include it and then you know different types of grouping can be done. Whatever the grouping that we are going to discuss here, they are primarily based on you know, you know the size of the units as well as the source of the you know uh, such, such kind of uh, industries. Okay? So, on the base of the size as well as the availability of the resources, Indian paper industry can be grouped as 6 different types. The first one is large integrated paper and paper board units. In general what happens in uh, paper making? Many paper making industries they do not make pulp required for the paper making. What they do? They buy uh, pulp from some other industries and then they try to make paper. Right? So, that means indirectly the pulp has been made by some other industry and then that pulp is being used for the paper making because this pulp is nothing but the mostly commercial uh, cellulose. So, uh, this commercial cellulose may also be utilized for the other purpose also. So, that is the reason many industries they target just only up to the pulp. Right? Because from the pulp if you wanted to make paper, you can make paper, you can make, if you wanted to make other cellulose derivatives, you can make those, those kind of cellulose derivatives also. So, the utilization or you know, application uh, spectrum is wide from the pulp. So, that is the reason you know many industry restrict themselves up to the pulp making and then paper industries they uh, buy pulp from the other industries and then try to make uh, you know papers. But however, if they are integrated in one single industry itself, so that is uh, going to be large in size. So, that is the reason the first category is large integrated paper and paper board units. Primarily these are based on the conventional raw materials like bamboo, wood, etc. with in-house pulping. Pulping also it is being done in the plant itself. They do not depend on the you know other industry for the pulp. Small paper units they are either exclusively based on non-conventional raw materials like bagas, uh, wheat straw, rice straw, etc. alone or maybe they can be used in combination with imported pulp, imported in the sense from the other sources of uh, you know uh, pulp industries. Okay? So, such units are usually uh, smaller units, smaller paper units, maybe such units classified as uh, smaller paper units. and then. Another one is again a small paper units, but that is based on waste paper alone. It is not based on the fresh raw material whether conventional or non-conventional. It is based on the waste paper. That waste paper uh, remove pigments or dirt etc. if at all other ingredients are there or impurities are there, those things uh, uh, you have to remove and then that waste paper you have to repulp and then make a paper. So, the, since the availability of waste paper is limited, the size of the units are also limited. But that is the reason these units are also known as the small paper units. And then paper units set up as part of large integrated sugar complexes for exploiting waste products like bagas. In the uh, sugar and starch industries, uh, what we have uh, seen uh, when you make a uh, sugar from the sugar cane, primarily what we have st uh, studied in the uh, sugar manufacturing, sugar cane is there that you extract the juice, juice extraction is taking place and then that juice is being concentrated to uh, certain higher concentration and then uh, you know crystallization of that uh, concentrated juice into the sugar crystals has been taking place. That is what we learned in the sugar, uh, sugar, uh, in sugar and starch industries when we were discussing about the sugar. Right? In the sugar, uh, getting from the sugar cane, what we get that uh, solid waste, whatever is the solid residue after getting or extracting all the juice that we call as bagas. Right? This is primarily used for the uh, cattle food or as a fertilizers in some in, the, uh, in some uh, or as fertilizers in some forms okay uh, agricultural fields that is what used but we also seen that this can also be used as a raw material for making paper so uh, if you are making paper uh, units within the sugar complexes then that is going to be better one okay that is one category of uh, indian paper industry Next is large integrated newsprint manufacturing units. Actually nowadays uh, news uh, in print media the quantity is less compared to the uh, decade or couple of decades before. So then uh, in the present days context we cannot say large but still integrated newsprint uh, manufacturing units if you consider you know that is going to be sufficiently large if you compare all of them. right? If you compare with the uh, small paper units they will be still larger. So, we can, we can call them large integrated uh, newsprint manufacturing units. 
Next is the hand paper uh, producing units, different types of hand papers are produced which are used for the interior uh, designing purposes, some those kind of applications it is used. There are hundreds of such units which use cotton racks, jute waste and cotton linters etc. as raw material. So, this is one of the uh, uh, way of classifying the Indian paper industries, of course, you can uh, classify in different ways as well. Okay? Now, the cellulose raw materials, we discuss about the cellulose raw materials because now what we understand we are going to get a uh, cellulose by pulping of a wood or uh, bagas or you know some other kind of a bamboo or any whatever raw materials we are uh, taking. Right? So, primarily that cellulose uh, is very essential. Basically from the wood what are you trying to do? You are trying to separate out the lignin and the non-cellulosic uh, components and then extract the cellulosic components and those uh, cellulosic components when you extract then you do certain kind of process to get the you know pulp that is required for pulp making. So, that raw material should have uh, proper requisite uh, so that you know paper industry growth uh, cannot be uh, you know inhibited or paper industry growth can be continuously there. Okay? So, requisites for any cellulose raw material for pulp and paper industry if you see they should be available in plentiful, whatever the raw material you take, right? they should be available plentiful and then not only that one throughout the year they should be available to the pulp mill. It is not that they are available elsewhere, but it is not available for the pulp mills for some reason, so that is of no use. So, should be readily available to pulp mill throughout the year. And then sometimes we understand that it is required to store such materials, right? If you are not directly making paper, so then it is required to store such cellulosic raw material. If you are storing or if you need to store them for couple of weeks or uh, for couple of months, you know they should not undergo any kind of deterioration that is the other requirement. And then they should produce quality fiber at high yield. So, we already uh, seen that uh, bamboo is a good raw material to produce a you know quality fiber, quality fiber in the sense that should be long enough and then that should have sufficient strength. right? Such kind of product you should get and then that also you should get at high yield rate that is also very essential because the demand for the paper is so much high that if you wanted to meet uh, such demands, your production has to increase. So, for that all these uh, parameters are essential to be considered. Then collection and storing should be possible in small area in general. Right? Let us say if you are making paper by procuring pulp from, from some other sources. Right? So, that pulp how much uh, moisture is there or how much solid it is there 40 to 60 percent or 90 percent depending on that one you know your size uh, storing size uh, area you know going to be uh, different, size of the storing area is going to change accordingly. Right? So, in sometimes it is necessary to transport. So, if transport of such kind of material is to be done then that should be able to be done at low cost. Right? So, these are from the uh, raw material point of view. From the product point of view, the raw material should have such a kind of uh, uh, characteristic that whatever the paper that is produced that should be produced at low cost. Right? And then the quality of such paper should also be competitive. If the paper quality is not competitive, you cannot withstand in the competitive uh, industrial world for long. Okay? And then higher priority rate should not be there at all. Now, let us see what is pulping. right? So, pulping is very much necessary in uh, paper industry. It is nothing but disintegration of bulky fibrous materials to individual or small agglomerate fibers in paper industries. right? So, that is very much essential and then that uh, uh, disintegration of bulky fibrous material into individual or small agglomerates is known as the pulping. It is very much essential in the paper industry. Right? If the pulping is successfully done, so then the paper quality is going to be a better one. As already mentioned, fiber that is long, high in cellulose content and low in lignin content is very ideal for high grade paper making. Okay? Now, we see a few types of raw materials that are used in paper industry like uh, soft wood, uh, hard wood. Uh, grass and reeds, etc., different kind of uh, raw materials are there. It is a classification of raw materials actually. Any of these raw materials can be used to 
get the pulp out of them and then that pulp should be you know having such kind of characteristic that a proper paper can be made. Okay? So, let us start uh, with soft woods, coniferous uh, like pine, spruce, fir, etc. such kind of uh, woods, even non-coniferous woods can also be utilized uh, for uh, making papers or in the paper industries. Then grasses and reeds are also used something like uh, lemon, paniula, siru, munji, etc. Others, uh, some other grasses are sabai grass, bamboo, etc. are also used. And then straws are also used as a raw material for making uh, papers. Based on rice, wheat, bagas, barley, reeds, etc., there are straws used for uh, you know paper making. Cotton linters are also used. Hardwoods also like uh, Acacia, lemon, gum, Mysore gum, etc., eucalyptus, it is uh, used more, pinus, patula, paper mulberry, and then rubber plant roots, etc., are also used for making uh, paper. Some high fiber uh, yielding plants like enough and mesta, etc., are also used for making you know, uh, papers. These are the uh, some types of raw materials. There may be other types of raw materials are also possible to make uh, paper. But however, uh, we have listed the most possible ones here. Now, from the raw materials requirement point of view, if you see the gap between production and demand is progressively increasing obviously and then it was almost like 40 percent in 2015. So, in, in today's context it may be even higher, right. So, there should be some kind of measures to take so that the paper industrial uh, growth should not be limited or stopped, okay. So, growth of industry, paper industry may require following actions, right. The very first one is the planned cultivation of bamboo because bamboo is a base raw material for making uh, pulp and paper as it is the only long fiber raw materials that we are having. Then development of eucalyptus also as a high yield uh, tree crop uh, would make this industry progress better. Increased use of bagas as raw materials because bagas from the sugar uh, manufacturing from sugarcane industry, whatever is there, that bagas is primarily used as a cattle uh, food or as a fertilizer in some kind of agricultural fields. If we can use uh, such bagas also for making pulp and then uh, in a paper, then it is going to be very beneficial for the industrial growth point of view, especially paper industry growth point of view. Better reclamation and reuse of waste paper. Actually, waste paper in general, without being separated, they are being thrown in dustbins, and then from the dustbins, it goes to you know municipal uh, solid waste, where it is if it is not being separated, then it is going as a waste. So, what you have to do? You have to do the separate uh, uh, paper, waste paper from. Uh, such kind of waste or collection from the household academic uh, or uh, you know business fields you know whatever the paper is there that should be collected separately and then that paper if you reuse after removing the uh, color imparting pigments etc from such old paper or waste paper and then you use it as a uh, raw material for uh, production of pulp and paper, it is going to be even better. Okay? And then it is going to be very essential from environment concern point of view, how many plants we can grow and then cut, how it is, ta it is taking time also. So, in that time the prices may also go higher. So, obviously from the environmental point of view rather cutting trees, it is better to use the uh, existing wastage as a resource to produce new uh, product. Okay, like here in waste paper you can use to produce new papers uh, etc., new pulp etc. In fact, you, you are also recovering some amount of pigment chemicals also you, are, you will be able to recover if you follow this particular step. And then installation of more efficient and continuous pulping processes may also improve the growth of uh, paper industry. Now we discuss about pulp. It is nothing but commercial cellulose derived from bamboo, bagasse, wood, etc. It is generally produced by either mechanical or chemical methods. If you see the production methods, there are three methods are available. The first one is the ground wood method. 
which can also be said as mechanical method because in this method uh, whatever the way that we uh, extract the pulp etc or fiber etc from the wood only mechanical methods are involved no chemical treatments are involved okay second method is the uh, chemical method where some kind of chemical treatment uh, would be required to get the required fibers from the wood and then semi chemical method where uh, only uh, partial chemical treatment, only uh, marginal chemical treatment would be there and then some kind of mechanical methods would be used to get the uh, required fibers. So, semi chemical method may be seen as a kind of combination of these two methods. So, let us start with one by one method, ground wood method, here uh, debarked wood is mechanically shredded to form fibers, these fibers are suitable for the production of papers, for the production of papers where you do not worry about its strength or how easy or difficult to do the bleaching. Bleaching is very much essential uh, in the pulp and paper industry. So, if you are not very much worried, let us say if you are making brown paper etc., those kind of thick brown papers etc., so you do not need to worry about uh, how easy to ble bleach it or how difficult to bleach it, right. Under such conditions, such fibers may be used to produce such kind of papers. Example, newsprint, toweling, toilet tissues and cheap paper bag books etc. are produced uh, by the fiber that has been you know uh, extracted or uh, you know collected by the groundwood method. Then chemical method, cellulose from wood is freed from lignin and other non-cellulose ingredients by chemical reaction by using mixtures of you know some chemicals for which there are two methods are there important methods sulphate method which is also known as the craft method and sulphite method. The names are because here in the sulphate method you use Na2SO4 sulphates, in the sulphite method Na2SO3 sulphites you used or sodium bisulphite or magnesium bisulphite etc. you use in such kind of methods. So, that is the reason these methods are known as the sulphide methods whereas Na2SO4 used such methods are known as the sulphate method or craft method. So, both uh, chemical processes are uh, existing and both of them are having uh, good applications. Non-cellulosic fraction is solubilized with insoluble pulp consisting of strong fibers of soft textures. These can be bleached to white or near white. When you are doing the uh, bleaching, so then obviously the mechanical strength of the paper in general decreases or mechanical strength of the pulp in general decreases, right. So, yield is only about half that from the mechanical groundwood process, okay. So, yield is approximately 40 to 65 percent only. What does it mean? Whatever the cellulose that is present in the wood, if you are doing the chemical treatment method, you could only uh, collect 40 to 65 percent of that cellulose, you are not able to collect the entire 100 percent of the cellulose that is present in the wood. But however, whatever the cellulose that you uh, produce by this chemical methods, you know, uh, they are very good for uh, different applications. That is in other words, whatever the pulp that is produced by the chemical method is the only type suitable for production of a chemical grade cellulose like in you know, rayon or cellulose derivatives etc and then if you require to make paper of high strength and or fine texture. Next is semi chemical method, here as I mentioned it is you know uh, mild chemical treatment is given to the wood, then after that some kind of mechanical methods are used. When you give this mild chemical treatment to the wood then what happen? A kind of uh, uh, you know loosening of the wood will take place and then and then extracting or you know shredding them using the mechanical method should be easier or that can be done with less, less force or less energy, okay. That is the purpose of this chemical, that is the uh, main difference between the two methods. So, though here chemical approach is also involved, mechanical approach is also involved. So, it cannot be said as a purely mechanical or purely chemical, it should be said as a semi chemical method. Right. So, wood chips are given a mild chemical treatment with a dilute uh, mixture of sulphide, sulphate, caustic soda and or soda ash reagents. It is not that all of them are used, depends on the nature of the wood, okay. Some of them are required, maybe mixture of the, some of them are required, in some case maybe only one would be sufficient, that depends on the raw material. Wood is softened 
sufficiently to allow mechanical separation of fibers without excess power that is the advantage of this mild chemical treatment in semi-chemical method. Further you get high yield of uh, you know 65 to 90 percent with somewhat better quality than the ground wood pulp. So, now you see the yield is better than the chemical. Chemical methods you know yield is only less than 65 percent or something like that, 40 to 65 percent or something like that, right. Uh, ground wood uh, the yield is better but you know uh, poor quality, strength might not be there or ease of bleaching may not be there in the pulp that is obtained by the ground wood method, right. So, both of such advantages are uh, you know to some extent overcame by semi chemical method because of uh, such uh, reasons it is found increasing interest in semi chemical pulp as a substitute for ground wood pulp. Lower yield results from more drastic chemical treatment but a better grade of fiber is produced. If you are doing drastic chemical treatment so then it will become a like you know you know uh, chemical method right. So, then under chemical method we already know that the yield is lower one though the quality of the paper is better one. So, that is what it mean by. Now, we see comparison of two chemical pulping processes for cellulose uh, fibers production like two methods like sulphate and sulphite methods we see their characteristics differences etcetera ok. So, let us start with the uh, trade name whatever the sulphate pulp is there its trade name is the craft whatever the sulphite pulp is there it is having different trade names like sulphite, magnified, neutral sulphite etcetera, right. And then type of uh, fibrous raw material required in the craft method or sulphate uh, pulp method all type uh, raw materials can be suitable whereas in the sulphite bamboo and hardwoods are preferable. Okay. Next coming to the essential chemical reagents used in digesters, craft method 60 percent NaOH and 25 percent Na2S obtained by reacting Na2SO4 with C of cellulose then what you do you get this Na2S okay. and then 15 percent Na2CO3 in 10 to 15 percent aqueous solution are in general used as a reagent. Whereas coming to the sulphite pulp uh, production process composition depends on process modification but all of them use SO3, right. So, let us say uh, if you have a magnified process then what you have magnesium uh, bisulphite plus free SO2 in acid media. If you have neutral uh, sulphide uh, pulp process then you use Na2SO3 that is uh, sodium sulphite, sodium carbonate and then sodium bicarbonate, okay. If you are having acid sulphide uh, pulp process then sodium bisulphite and then sodium sulphite are in general used as a essential chemical reagents. Then coming to the type of uh, digester uh, you have the batch or continuous both are suitable for uh, both the processes. About the digester conditions what you can see here in the sulphate pulp time required for a given type of uh, raw material is less whereas time required for the same type of raw material is uh, more in the sulphide pulp. Sulphate let us say if you have if you are having wood based materials then 2 to 5 hours time digestion time is sufficient whereas in the sulphide pulp making you need 6 to 10 hours. Similarly, if you have bagasse raw material then 5 to 6 minutes is sufficient in sulphate pulp making method. Whereas, uh, if you take the same uh, material and then do the sulphide uh, pulp process then you need more time 20 to 40 minutes. This difference is primarily because of the condition that are being used. In the sulphide pulp you are using 120 to 150 degrees centigrade whereas in this sulphate pulp process 170 to 180 degrees centigrade can also be used. Pressure 10 atmosphere uh, in sulphate pulp whereas it is only 4 to 6 atmosphere in the sulphide pulp. You may be thinking that this you may increase further this temperature pressure and then reduce the time. No, that is not possible because if these are all the optimized condition if you play with such condition the strength of the pulp may not be sufficient enough or maybe a subsequent bleaching may not be easy such kind of problems may be 
there or maybe recovery of a chemical may not be recovered economically. So, such kind of uh, situations may arise if you uh, use the higher temperature and pressure in the sulphide pulp. Okay? If you use the lower temperature and pressure in the sulphide pulp, then it is possible that the yield might not be sufficiently uh, good enough or the lignin removal uh, from the wood may not be completed cellulose whatever you are extract, uh, you are getting in that one some fractions of lignin may also be there. So, all these factors are there primarily the uh, removal of lignin how efficiently you are doing and then are how efficiently are you maximizing the cellulose recovery and then uh, reducing the lignin content in that one that is how these conditions are optimized. Okay? Coming to the chemical uh, recovery whether the sulphate pulp process or sulphite pulp process, waste disposal has to be you know, uh, you know done as per the laws. Right? Waste disposal laws and economics require a rather complete recovery of all chemicals used up to 90 to 98 percent of uh, recovery of uh, sodium and then sulphur from the uh, waste liquor whatever is there that is sufficient enough and then acceptable in general. Coming to the materials of construction for the sulphate pulp process, mild steel or any alloy compatible with the caustic liquor is uh, required, whereas for the external heat exchangers, internal material is required for the tubes that are present in the external heat exchangers because of the caustic nature of the liquor that is present. Whereas in sulphate pulp process, let us say if you have acid. Uh, magnified process it requires digester linings of acid proof brick because acid is uh, involved in the making of uh, pulp in this uh, acid magnified process and then metal components of type SS316 bronze and lead are required. Let us say if you have a neutral sulphide process then you can use the equipment whatever that you use for the sulphate process or the material of construction that you use for the sulphate process the same thing may be used for the neutral sulphide process. About the uh, product point of view, let us say if you consider types of pulp then sulphate pulp is brown in color and difficult to remove uh, color unless chlorine dioxide is used as a bleaching agent which is again uh, expensive and then we are going to discuss uh, it has been uh, replaced nowadays by hydrogen peroxide and sodium hydroxide. If you do not do the bleach then unbleached fibers are very strong. Okay? So, flexibility may not be there, if the fibers are too strong then flexibility in the final paper it may not be there. Okay? Coming to the sulphide pulp, it is dull white color since the color is almost close to the uh, white color, it can be easily bleached or the bleaching could be uh, done easily without much effort. Okay? Fibers are weaker obviously when the uh, enough bleaching has already been done, so then fibers would become slightly weaker. Now coming to the typical paper products, from the sulphate pulp you can make strong brown bags brown paper wrapping, paper board boxes, strong white paper via bleaching etc. you can produce. From the sulphide pulp you can make uh, white grades papers, book paper, sanitary tissues etc. you can make because the fibers are weaker and then they are white in color or dull white in color. Now we are going to discuss about uh, craft pulp process which is also known as the sulphate process because of a uh, use of Na2SO4 in the process, this process is known as the sulphate pulp process as already mentioned, its commercial name is craft pulp process. If you see the chemical reactions, digestion hydrolysis and solubilization of lignin reactions if you uh, see, let us say uh, whatever the wood material is there that is uh, biopolymer, so then that is represented by R, R prime. If it reacts with NaOH then you get the cellulose ROH, cellulose are having such kind of structure, R is different and then different structures is possible that we are going to discuss in cellulose and cellulose derivatives anyway. Okay? The same R, R prime whatever the wood or biopolymer is there that uh, reacts with NaOH then you can get cellulosic esters 
like R double prime C O O N A. That is also possible. The rate of uh, reactions may be different here. So, though, though the reactants are same, you know different products are produced at different rates and different rate constants may be there. Okay? Other uh, possibility that the same biopolymer whatever the wood etcetera that is taken as raw material that reacts with Na2S which is coming from let us say you have Na2SO4 and then the carbon that is present in R whatever this R is there that carbon is there. So, then what you get Na2S plus CO2 you get that NO2S if uh, it is being uh, utilized by uh, this uh, wood raw material again to get mercaptans. Now, chemical recovery from black liquor it is very essential actually you know in the paper making uh, pulp and paper making process huge quantity of water is used and then huge quantity of liquor is being produced. That liquor is black in color green in color or brown in color by different types of process that you are going to use. The color is coming because of uh, some kind of chemicals that are present. right? So, such chemicals uh, has to be recovered and then, then uh, white liquor only has to be reused within the digester or after checking the BOD that should be discarded if not useful in the process. right? So, chemical recovery from the liquor is very, very important step in the pulp and paper industry. That is the reason in the pulp and paper uh, manufacturing process we are separately discussing about the pulp making and then separately discussing about chemical recovery uh, after uh, discussing the pulp process and then separately we are discussing about uh, so called paper making. Okay? So, in the chemical recovery options smelting furnace is one of the important step where lignin salt whatever NAR such kind of salts are there they will react with the air or oxygen that has been supplied or uh, preheated air is in general supplied to the smelting furnace. So, that preheated air and then this lignin salt will react to give Na2CO3 and carbon dioxide. This can be reused as per the requirement. And then sulphate, sodium sulphate whatever is there that will react with the carbon that is available in the R. R is the chain, organic chain, whatever the organic structures are there you know it may be uh, having C, H, O, etc. this kind of uh, contents may be there. So, that C whatever that is present in R you know that would be reacting with Na2SO4 and then you get Na2S plus 2CO2. So, the you can recover this one. Right? They are all present in the black liquor in a dangerous form. Right? So, if you do this kind of reaction so then what will happen you can get uh, some kind of chemicals which you can easily recover how that we are going to discuss in the next lecture. Then in chemical recovery of uh, black liquor causticizing is another important step. Na2CO3 reacts with calcium hydroxide to give NaOH that can be reused for the digestion purpose and then it also produces calcium carbonate. This calcium carbonate decomposes into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide calcium oxide may be reacting with water to give the calcium hydroxide which may be reused to causticize the sodium carbonate. So, you know uh, NaOH whatever required uh, for the digestion that can be you know produced from the Na2CO3 that Na2CO3 is being produced you know from here from the lignin salts. right? So, whatever the lignin salt that are present in the liquor you know you can uh, uh, you can do the uh, smelting process to get Na2CO3 and then do the causticizing of this Na2CO3 to get the NaOH and then that NaOH you can re reuse in the digestion purpose in the digester. Okay? So, in this process of getting NaOH from Na2CO3 using calcium hydroxide you are getting calcium carbonate that can also be decomposed and then re uh, reacted with water to give calcium hydroxide. So, again you can reuse within the process for the causticizing purpose. All these steps we are going to see in a uh, flow chart where we are going to discuss chemical recovery or recovery of chemicals from black liquor which would be the part of next lecture. Quantitative requirements, basis 1 ton of pulp bone dry solids basis if you take then bamboo or wood 2.2 to 2.5 tons lime makeup 18 kgs 
salt cake or Na2SO4 makeup 50 kgs, sulfur 8 kgs, plant capacity 100 to 700 tons per day. So, all these chemicals you know whatever the lime etc, salt, sulfur etc are there you know more majorly they are used in chemical recovery part. Soon we are going to see in the next slide that you know this craft sulphate process whatever are there to make the pulp, it several steps are there right. So, one of the important step is the chemical recovery step. So, some of these chemicals primarily used there only, but not in the main digester ok. So, process description as I mentioned major steps that are existing in the uh, process of pulp making using the sulphate process include digestion of wood based raw materials digestion. So, you need only NaOH that you can get from the black liquor as per the uh, reaction whatever the NaR is there that would be reacting with the air or oxygen in the smelting process to give Na2CO3. This Na2CO3 reacting with the calcium hydroxide to give NaOH plus calcium carbonate. This NaOH is required for the digestion of wood based material. So, that can be used, right. Whereas, uh, in order to uh, reduce the wastage or utilization of too much chemical, uh, you know you try to uh, get the required chemicals let us say calcium hydroxide is required to get the sodium hydroxide, right. So, but you cannot supply too much of uh, external chemicals to recover chemicals from the uh, black liquor. So, for that purpose what you do whatever the produced uh, other chemicals are there they should be properly utilized. Let us say this calcium carbonate. Uh, you take and then do the decomposition you get uh, Ca, CaO, calcium oxide and then carbon dioxide you may get. This calcium oxide you react with water to get uh, calcium hydroxide. So, so these are the uh, causticizing steps, this is the uh, smelting step. So, here whatever the NOH required for the digestion that you are getting from the smelting uh, of a, a black liquor in the smelting furnace, right. And then whatever the NaOH required uh, for the digestion directly you are not getting from the smelting process, you are getting Na2CO3 from the smelting uh, furnace reactions. That Na2CO3 reacting with calcium hydroxide that is uh, milk of lime separately uh, provided to get the sodium hydroxide, right, ok. That sodium hydroxide you can use here for the digestion purpose. Then modified process for bagasse, the process uh, flow chart whatever we are going to discuss, we are discussing primarily about the wood base. So, what should be the uh, modification required for other raw materials like bagasse that also we will be going to discuss. Then bleaching of pulp is very much essential to make uh, the paper of sufficient whiteness etc. or for removing the colors from the pulp etc. it is very much essential. Then finishing operations of the pulp, ok. Like if you are uh, not making paper, let us say, then the pulp finishing operation of pulp is the final operation. Whether you are making the pulp, you know, 40 to 60 percent solids or 90 percent solids, remaining water, etc., that all you know should be done according to the steps explained in the finishing operation of the pulp, as we are going to discuss. Finally, recovery of chemicals, as I mentioned, it is very very essential both from the economics point of view as well as from the environmental concerns point of view as well. However, this part we will be discussing in the next lecture. Today's lecture will conclude after discussing these four steps. So, let us start with the flow chart of a craft sulphate pulp process, right. Here whatever the wood that is there you know that actually locks you take, you know it may be having the uh, box etc. So, debarking of locks has to be done and then you uh, do some kind of uh, tumbling and rubbing actions, right. Then whatever uh, the material that is there after getting this tumbling and rubbing action, you take it to the uh, so called uh, chippers. 
this chippers is nothing but you know uh, something like uh, uh, knife cutters or cutting machines. These machines about these machines and then tumbling and rubbing about tumbling and uh, rubbing mechanical unit operations etc. You study in the separate course on mechanical unit operations which is also available in the NPTEL online uh, portal. Okay. So, here this uh, knife cutters what happen let us say you have the uh, drums which are rotating on the inner uh, circumference of drums what you have you have different types of you know knives connected like this. Right. So, these knives what they do when this is this drum is rotating they will also rotate in different direction without interacting with each other right. But when the material fed here so that material wood material whatever is there that would be broken down into the small chips. They would be broken down into the small chips like 2 to 5 centimeter chips etc. So, the size how much uh, product uh, chip size that you want that depends you know accordingly you have to rotate the drum and then accordingly you have to uh, have the number of knives and then size of the knives etc. may be uh, you know decided accordingly. Okay. So, cutting machines we uh, you can see details of such cutting machines in mechanical unit operations course uh, available in uh, NPTEL MOOCs uh, portal anyway. Such chips you take to each chip bin then using a star wall you uh, send them to this uh, this is nothing but D aerator if any air etc is present and then preheater. So, both operations are done in this uh, D aerator and preheater. Right. So, after some time when sufficient deaeration and then preheating has been done that is in order to make sure that moisture etc whatever is there that has to be removed. Okay. So, here whatever the moisture etc the anything uh, turpentine recovery etc are there so they would be recovered if at all possible that depends on the raw material to raw material. Right. So, after this uh, preheating steps the material would be taken through a rotating uh, tapped plug which is rotating using this one you transfer the material to the lift line this is the lift line actually. Okay. From this lift line the material goes to the continuous digester this tall uh, column green column whatever is there that is 25 to 30 meters tall uh, continuous digester is there. Since this material whatever chips are there they are dry they are solids they may not easily uh, transported to the uh, uh, continuous digester. So, then for that purpose what you do? You send a recirculating liquor along the lift line at certain pressures. So, that recirculating liquor will carry and then drop the uh, material or uh, the uh, wood chips at the top of the continuous digester. To this continuous digester what we are getting? We are also feeding liquor. Which liquor? White liquor that is after removing the chemicals from the liquor. So, because in this process what you can see you are getting the black liquor actually. This black liquor has to be treated to recover chemicals. right? So, after recovering these chemicals whatever the clear white liquor is there that we call white liquor that you take into the mix tank. Sometimes you know black liquor may also be provided depending on the pressure requirement other, other conditions within the uh, this within the continuous digester. So, that uh, white liquor mixed with black liquor is also sent to the continuous uh, digester through four stage centrifugal pump. Right. Now, this continuous digester is provided with steam heating uh, provisions at different levels to maintain different temperature. Let us say at the top you have to maintain 140 to 150 degree centigrade. At the intermediate level you need to have a uh, 170 to 180 degree centigrade and then at the lowest level you need to have a temperature 65 degree centigrade. Right? So, for that purpose this you know uh, heat recovery system is required. So, how our heat reducing system is required. In order to reduce the heat by the time that uh, you know uh, wood material that is coming to the bottom right or uh, bottom of the digester you know uh, the temperature has to be low enough. It cannot be at 170 or 180 degree centigrade. 
if it is at high temperature and then you are uh, sending to the next level, what happens? The paper uh, would not get the required mechanical strength, right? So, how to reduce the temperature from 170 to 180 degrees centigrade? For that reason, whatever the black liquor is there, that is sent to the bottom of the, you know, uh, this continuous digester. Whereas, in the process, uh, you know, liquor is also collected from the side stream from the side stream here and then that would be preheated after passing through a heat exchanger and then send it as a recirculating liquor along the lift line to uh, carry forward or carry up the chips of the wood, uh, de-aerated de and preheated chips of the wood, okay. So, this temperature reduced uh, digestion mixture whatever is there that is passed through a strainer where you recover or, uh, some amount of the black liquor and then that you send back to the continuous digester for the temperature control here. Remember this temperature control is very much essential actually within this uh, pulp. Accordingly your uh, temperature and then time of operation has to be decided time of operation has to be decided accordingly so that to maintain the temperature like this, okay. Now after passing the strainer whatever the uh, digested mixture is there that would be sent to a blow tank through a blow down wall. What is the purpose of this blow tank to recover if at all more heat is there because now 65 degrees centigrade the material is coming in. So some more energy is recovered here and then that is stored as steam. That steam you know that may be reused uh, for the preheating purpose within this uh, de-aerator preheater uh, chamber or that can also be separately collected for some other different purposes, different heating purposes as well, right. So after recovering more heat from the uh, digested uh, pulp, you know what you do that uh, cool down material you pass through your screens separate out the knots and undigested residues as solids, pulp, liquor, mixture, whatever is there that you pass through rotary drum filters, right, where hot water is sprayed for the possible, uh, you know, uh, cleaning of the pulp, right. About 70 percent of pulp is uh, dried and sent to paper mill for the paper, paper making, whereas the remaining 30 percent pulp is sent to the bleaching plant and then from here you know one can uh, take them to the cellulose uh, derivative production plants etc. for this purpose it is taken after the bleaching. Whereas the liquor that is coming out from this rotary drum filtration process uh, whatever there, so that black liquor you have to do the chemical recovery. This chemical recovery we are going to see in the next lecture how to do this one, right. Some part of this black liquor as I already mentioned is mixed with the white liquor and then sent back to the continuous digester again. Some part of the black liquor is sent to the bottom of the continuous digester to cool down the temperature of the mixture at the uh, bottom of the continuous digestion tank, okay. So primarily here what we are seeing only digestion related things we concentrated here. In the next lecture, we will be concentrating more on the chemical recovery uh, related details through different types of flow charts, okay. Now the steps whatever we discussed uh, in flow chart, those things we see here once again. Digestion of wood based materials is the first step out of five steps. Logs with bark are debarked by tumbling and rubbing action, then conveyed to chippers. In chippers, large rotary disc with uh, many heavy knives reduce the wood to 2 to 5 centimeters flat chips. Such size reduced chips are metered via star wall to a de-aerator preheater. After several minutes of operation in the preheater, chips are discharged through a rotating tapered plug into the lift line. Since these are solids, they may not be conveyed easily in the lift line. So, in order to improve the transportation of uh, solid chips through lift line, recirculating digestion liquor at well atmosphere is used that transfer chips to upper soaking zone of 25 to 30 meters tall digester tower. Chips flow down past a series of circumferential uh, screen plates that are present in the uh, continuous digester 
cooking liquor is withdrawn as side stream and recirculated through external heat exchangers to reheat and control the digestion temperature within the tower and then in order to accomplish maximum lignin removal in the digestion as I already mentioned primarily lignin removal and then increasing the cellulose content that is taking place with minimum cellulose hydrolysis and consequent loss of uh, bulk yield digestion time and temperature are adjusted. Okay? The time and temperature are adjusted such a way that the lignin removal has to be maximum and then cellulose hydrolysis and then loss of uh, bulk yield uh, should be minimum. Digested chips are cooled at the base of tower by injection of cold black liquor. This is to avoid mechanical weakening of fibers from steam explosion of the hot liquor when passed through blow down wall. Pulp liquor slurry is passed through the wall to blow tank where residual heat is recovered as steam which passes overhead with turpentine vapor to chip preheater. Pulp is filtered and separate black liquor and then screen to remove wood knots and other undigested residues. Brown pulp goes either to product finishing operations or to the bleaching plant as per the final requirement of the product. What purpose are we using uh, this pulp accordingly? Uh, you know either bleaching or you know paper making uh, this pulp has to be sent. Second step in the uh, craft process is modified uh, uh, process for bagasse. Whatever the process we uh, discussed in the flowchart is for the wood wood based raw materials. If your raw material is bagasse then what kind of modifications are required? Sulphate process described for wood based materials must be modified for bagasse raw materials which contains dirt and pit. Actually bamboo is a very good raw material because it gives the long and strong fibers right but it contains lot of dirt and pit. The pit has to be removed. Actually if you wash the bagasse properly then this pit will go away but it has to be proper technologically done. Something like wet uh, grinding or uh, wet hammer milling etc. if you do and then in that process whatever the pit would be there that would be washed away with the water that has been used in the wet grinding mills. Okay? This later is the thin walled short cells which make poor paper fiber and must be removed. Depitting methods are based on the fact that fibrous portion of bagasse is much more difficult to break up by mechanical action than the pit. When you do the hammering kind of process it is lucky that your fibrous material whatever is there that is not going to be broken down easily compared to the pit. So pit can be easily removed. Thus exposure of bagasse to strong mechanical shredding grinding action found to reduce pit to a fine powder while the desired fiber bundles are reduced in size. So both the operations have been done by this mechanical shredding method. So how it is done? It is done by wet grinding. Wet grinding in hammer mill with water washing pit through the screens is preferred for this purpose. Other major modification is chemical pulping where finely divided structure and chemical makeup of bagasse allows rapid penetration and reaction by alkaline pulping materials. Thus 5 minutes in digester are sufficient providing a basis for high throughput continuous digester. Third step is bleaching of pulp. Removal of color residue or bleaching may be accomplished by the use of a different type of oxidizing agents but such oxidizing agents should be cheaper and then have minimum degrading action such a way one has to use. Okay? They should not have degrading action on cellulose. There may be degrading action you cannot avoid but that should be minimum. Also such agents should be you know uh, as much cheaper as possible. Traditionally chlorine type oxidizing agents uh, were used in stage wise operations like uh, chlorine dioxide something like that. However, chlorine bleaching has been found to produce dioxins and other undesirable compounds of uh, bleacher effluent. Because of such reasons peroxide, hydrogen peroxide are uh, you know primarily used nowadays. Also it is being combined with NaOH as a bleaching agent. Thus use of chlorine as paper mill bleach has steadily been decreasing. 
to a substantial extent chlorine is replaced by hydrogen peroxide. In modern and improved bleaching stage, hydrogen peroxide is added together with sodium hydroxide which activates the peroxide. But how much concentration of this uh, NaOH or peroxide is required that has to be balanced. So, a stabilizer is necessary to maintain peroxide concentration at effective levels and for that purpose sodium silicate is mostly used. Because of bleaching, scales or thin crust forms on internal surfaces of uh, pulp mill equipment, especially uh, on heat transfer surfaces whatever the uh, scales or thin crust are formed they must be removed during the periodic downtime of the plant. It is estimated that pulping industry uses about 240 million pounds per year of hydrogen peroxide for the bleaching by 2001. Finishing operations of the pulp, whatever the pulp that is there, so if the plant is captive paper type then wet pulp is conveyed to beater operation which is first step in production of paper you know we will be uh, studying about this one in subsequent lectures on paper making right when we talk about uh, paper making. So, then this step we can discuss uh, thoroughly, but however dewatering is necessary if pulp is shipped any distance for use in paper or as chemical cellulose for different other applications. So, how it is done different methods are there, first one is that hydraulic pressing at uh, higher uh, pressure like 200 to 300 atmosphere to form wet slab sheets which can be dried further. Once doing this hydraulic press what you can do? You can do vacuum flash drying right so that to reduce the water uh, or the uh, to make more dewatering of the pulp to produce a dry fluffy material which can be bailed right. So, first you do hydraulic pressing then you do the vacuum flash drying so that you know more and more dewatering can be done. By this time you know mostly more most of the water may be removed, mostly it is dewatered. Then depending on the application extrusion in form of easily handled nodules or pellets containing either 30 to 40 percent solids for conveying short distances or dry to 90 percent solids for conveying longer range shipping purpose. So, those are the four important steps we have discussed. The fifth important step of the recovery of chemicals we are going to discuss in the next lecture. Okay. The references for today's lecture are provided here. Thank you.